Coming to you this day from the third floor of the Rhode Island State House, my name is Dave Barber in a segment we call Capital Spotlight. We take five minutes, we speak to a member of the General Assembly about some of the things they've been working on and its impact on all of us here in the Ocean State. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to welcome back a gentleman we've had the good fortune of interviewing before. He represents a portion of Rhode Island that's down in my neck of the woods in East Greenwich. It is our pleasure to welcome back the Honorable State Representative Anthony Giarusso. Representative, good to see you. Good to see you, Dave. Happy New Year. And same to you and you folks in the General Assembly have hit the ground running. But in particular, I know because of your background as a business person, you're in the manufacturing business here, and not to embarrass you, but you have a successful company. You're well regarded in the business community for uh, the success of your company. You obviously are concerned about promoting business in Rhode Island. In fact, you think the Small Business Council, who uh, you've spoken to recently, needs to uh, make their voices heard. Well, as we said in the press release, we need to speak very loudly. You know, uh, I don't want business people to be victimized like they're the bad guys. It's us against them because at the end of the day, businesses make payrolls and those payrolls, they pay mortgages, they pay car payments, tuitions, people go shopping and it's it's a big cycle. And, and business, they're friends, they're not enemies. You, you know, we were talking right before the taping and you have somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 people that work for your firm. And, uh, you know, that's a pretty big payroll uh, each and, and every pay period. Um, you're on the front lines. You know the benefits, you know the challenges of uh, running a business. What are we doing right here and what are we doing wrong? Well, it's hard for me to speak, uh, you know, because we started our business when things were much better in Rhode Island. You know, our business started, uh, actually, it's next month will be 28 years. Uh, and I always say that if we started that business today, we might have a really, really difficult time because of uh, the regulations, but we worked our way into it. So we started small, and here we are now with, you know, with a, a much bigger facility. We had a little place in uh, Valley Street on, in Onlyville when we started out in 1986. But there are a lot of challenges. You know, that $500 a year for the, for the filing fees, it's not a big deal to a company like us. It's more of a stone in our shoes, so to speak. Right. But it is a big deal to a lot of companies, especially ones that are growing or starting. Well, and, and again, um, all you have to do is look at the rest of the country. And to be honest, when it comes to business, statistically, we don't fare real well. You and some of your colleagues have put an emphasis with this theme of getting to 25. It's got a ring to it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell our viewers what that means. Well, really, in just about everything that we have, you know, any, any ranking, we're, we're pretty high up. Where we need to be low, we're pretty low, and we need to be high, depending on the ranking. You know, 49th or 50th. So we're saying, let's not worry about getting to number one. Let's get to the middle. Let's get to 25. Deal with getting to 25 because 25 alone, you know, what, what it does, it grows like 12,000 jobs, and it does, it makes us better in uh, tax friendliness. So 25 is good. It's a lot better than 50. Not as good as one but you have to get to 25 before you can think about getting to one. Well, if, if we did get to 25 in some of those all important business categories, that would really be a home run. For example, uh, you know, we're, we're tied or at least very close uh, to being uh, tied with, uh, I believe, Nevada for the highest unemployment in the country. And, and that's certainly troubling and disturbing. And obviously folks like yourself would like to, to, to see that change. And the only person that's really gonna make that change is small business because all the experts say that's where the future of jobs lie. Well, yeah, definitely. And then every, every um, it looks like every, you open up the newspapers and there's somebody else saying something that's gonna compromise our business environment. You know, I keep hearing all the time, raise the minimum wage. You know, the minimum wage is not supposed to be a living wage. It's something to get started. It's to hire younger kids. You know, if, you're gonna, if the minimum wage is 12 bucks an hour, you, that 16-year-old that kid will never get a job because who, who are you going to hire, somebody who's 30 or somebody who's 16? You know, it, that type of stuff. There, there's so many things that we could do. And then every time we do something that makes it, that goes the wrong way, it, it's troublesome. Well, I, I know in that release that you alluded to earlier, you also stated that many of your colleagues in the General Assembly view business as the enemy. Do you, really, do you really sense that? Do you, do you really feel that there are a lot of folks here in this building that, that view uh, small business as the enemy? I'm not really sure about the enemy, but 
you know, when the rubber hits the road, you are what your record says you are. And we passed some bills that are not business friendly. You know, we know what we need to do. Don't ask me why we're not doing it. Everybody knows we need to do something about our corporate taxes. Everyone knows we need to do about some regulations. Everyone knows that we're supposed to be, you know, our constituents are really the people that we're representing, but too many of us are representing special interests. So as much as I have respect for the body and I have respect for everybody in that room, the record says a lot. Well, I have to tell you, uh, having gotten the opportunity to know you since you've come into uh, public life here, um, you really practice what you preach. I, I mean, uh, you, you also said in that release how much your employees mean to you. That hundred number that I alluded to earlier, you were proud to say that you've never missed a payroll. And, and, and I'll tell you, that's a heck of an achievement because it, that's really, really significant. And although your company is successful and, and you've been successful, there's not an ounce of pretense about you. And, and, and I think that goes a long way. And I think it gives added credibility to your message because you seem to really, uh, you, you know, practice what you preach. Well, thanks, Dave. I appreciate you saying that. It's, uh, you know, it, it's really a compliment when, when you compliment a business guy about how he handles his business. You know, we value our employees. We love our employees. They're like family. Our turnover is almost zero. You know, every year, we've not missed a year. We've been in business now, as I said, it'll be 28 years next month. We've never missed a payroll. We've never gone a year without giving a Christmas bonus. Never gone a year without giving a raise. And we do all paid holidays. We have a 401k that we are the only ones that, that put money into it. So we, we value the employees. And, and we just want everybody to know that businesses are not the bad guys. Well, listen, I'll tell you what, you're one heck of a nice guy. And, and, and I'll tell you, I, I thank you for taking time out of your schedule to spend a few minutes with us before session. I wish you and your colleagues in the House of Representatives the very best. Continued success in 2014. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate you. And, and thanks to you, too, for watching. We couldn't do it without you. On behalf of Capital Television, my name is Dave Barber.